but there are also legitimate reasons to use it. And so, um, anyway, so that, that's, that's my thoughts on UFOs. And then the, um, the AI thing. So, uh, I, I prefer, I would call it artificial stupidity. So really what we've invented is artificial stupidity. Not it, we've invented a high school dropout that we can talk to, um, and, and give them tasks and they'll fuck them up like a 10th of the time. Mm-hmm. Uh, that, that's basically what we've done. The, the AI that we have is not thinking. Uh, it's just, it's just, it's a statistical generator that's re just regurgitating the, the mishmash of what people are saying on the internet, basically. Totally. Uh, like, that's basically all it's doing. Um, it, it can't really solve problems. It can't really think people should not be using it as an authority on anything. You should never be trusting it. Uh, and we know all the reasons you can, you know, the hallucinations and the errors and, uh, and all of that stuff. But what really frustrates me the most is that large language model building, which is what this is based on, what we're calling AI is not AI, uh, and it will never be AI. Like So so people who want to get to artificial general intelligence, like a genuine HAL 9000, like a real artificially intelligent, like a consciousness that we, that's re- really thinking, yeah. and not, not a clever Hans who's pretending to think. Um, if we want that, we need to stop this. We need to like not be investing a trillion dollars in LLM because that's going nowhere. We're actually literally stalled on advance towards AGI because we're putting all our capital into this dead end that will never get there. Uh, and and that frustrates me because we could be putting those trillion dollars in the correct pathway towards developing AGI, which would be way more valuable. Um, it's just you can't make money off of the midpoints of you know, an uncomplete AGI in real life, but you can make theoretically make money off of LLM, although that has yet to be seen. No one's making money off of it. All one's in the red on LLM. So like no totally. one's making money on it. Um, but they think they can, and they're trying to come up with clever ways to do it or whatever. You know, the whole artificial girlfriend thing is a classic example of this. It's like that's, you're not going to, you're not, not going to make a trillion dollars doing that. That's a doomed project. But anyway, they're trying to do that. They were thinking more about money and not really doing AGI. They're thinking about how do you fleece uh, capital investors. How do we just get that capital and golden parachute out of here? Like they're not really doing any real AGI. They, they don't have like the people up at the top. They don't really believe that they're going to get AGI. And anybody on the bottom really should know that 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 they're not. This LLM is a scam. Like it is not going to develop AGI. That is never going to happen. Yeah. What we should be doing, we should be putting all of these resources. Assuming you want to put these resources into AGI, right? Like mm-hmm. that's that's a different social conversation. But assuming yeah. you want to do that, you should be putting it into model building. And we, we, we were doing that for a little while. So we had like, we were doing robots uh, like Shaky and uh, I can't remember the name. There was various of these robots from the 80s up until I think the early 2000s where the mission was to get a robot that could learn its environment, learn its body. So like you give it, you program it with no information about even the body that it has or the environment. And you just give it the skills to learn those things, model them, and then use that information to ma- navigate around the model to follow to complete tasks right and now that's what animals do right so like if you want to if you want to get to agi you've got to follow the same gradient that nature did mm. and so what did you do you start with environmental modeling so like you, a cat or a mouse or whatever what you, you should be able to build an artificial cat before you will ever build an artificial person mm. uh and so like basically or an artificial horse would be a better way to think of it if you look at like they're doing all the wrong things for for self driving cars. Like completely, it's wrong. Like they're they're it's a dead end. It'll never work. That's why they're never gonna have the robo taxis. They they can't do what they think because they're they're focusing on the same similar kind of like statistical guessing, rather than having it build a model and navigate the model. So like building a robotic horse would make more sense. Like in terms of like why why is it that a horse knows where to go and how to avoid things? Because it actually understands what those things are in the environment, right? So, like, it, it actually is modeling the environment. It's modeling itself. It knows its legs. It okay. knows what it can and can't do. So, uh, but it, but now horses lack self-consciousness, but they still have, they understand the model building. So, you get the model building. Now, once you've mastered that, now you've got your robotic horse, right? You've done this. LLMs aren't doing this, right? Like, even the self-driving car models are not doing this. But if we put the money in there, you get your robotic horse. Okay, the next step is it can model an environment and it can model its body. Can it, you get it to like do one step over, which is model a causal system. So like, can you get it to think about things that are going on behind the scenes and model how those things are going in order to anticipate where something is going to happen or how to build something or whatever? So if you can get it to think about causal systems, now you're getting closer to like monkeys, right? 
Uh, and then you know, what you do is you steer that causal system building onto metacognition. So you get your monkey, now you got your robotic monkey, you get your robotic monkey to try to predict the causal system of another mind. So there's another person in the room, guess what it's going to do, figure out how the causal system works there. And then you've got metacognition. Now you definitely have a robotic monkey, uh, maybe even a robotic ape. So what's the next step? Well, you take that and you turn it on itself and say, okay, model your own mind because it's just another causal system, right? So model your own mind. And when, once it's modeling its own mind, well, that is self-consciousness. Right? So, you, so you have to follow the model building gradient up to do it. And that's how you do it. You don't do it with the, the statistics bullshit. Uh, that, that's not, never going to get there. So anyway, yeah, that, that's like, I have a lot of like, and this gets angers people and get into arguments over this. But yeah, I, no, I have strong thoughts about the AI thing. <laughs> that, that's absolutely fascinating. I'm going to be stewing on that for a while. I need, <laughs> I, need to, well, I need to fully process everything you just said. But I, yeah, I, right. <laughs> I understand what you're saying, though. It's it's fascinating. Yeah, I have I have that. a bunch of links. Uh, that uh, not a, uh, I got some stuff on the model building, but I've got stuff on the why the LLM will never get there. Oh, on your website. No, I just have them. So like oh, if you ask me, uh, I did write an article many years ago called 10 Years to the Robot Apocalypse that, that talks about what, everything I just told you just there. But that was before the artificial stupidity uh, oh, I fad. Um, but it does talk about how model building is the key. And that's the thing that they dropped. They were doing it up to like 2010 and then they just stopped and they put all their money into this. Or I guess it was 2050. I don't remember when they started the LLM stuff, but re relatively recently, uh, like last 10 years. So mm. Anyway, yeah, so there's so you can look at 10 years to the robot apocalypse. That's that has some of my thoughts on this. I haven't really done a screed on AI um on my blog because I just I think other people have done it better. I, I don't really have anything to add, I guess. Uh but if you want my link list, uh email me or whatever and <laughs> yeah. send you what I've got. No, absolutely. This is something we're trying to start thinking about more. I think uh like the we need more evolved philosophy and ethics of artificial intelligence and technology in general. I think right now we're feels like we're more reactionary to everything. It's like, oh, we got this cool thing. Let's unleash it and just see what happens. Yeah, right. <laughs> As opposed to, yeah, like, right, is right. this good for, like you said, is it good for humans? Is it good yeah, for society, yeah, yeah, yeah. people? So, you know, uh, and there's two sides to that, right? So there's people who will use that thinking to over-regulate and to over-impede. Uh, so I'm I'm hesitant to, like, I understand the, the like, slowdown idea, but some people want to slow down too much. Uh, mm. And and, and I, I don't want to use the slow down concept. Like, let's do this ethically as an excuse to just stop, prevent something from being done. Uh, yeah. So, I, so I, I have a kind of like a, what do you call a synthetic view there? Like, like the an this thesis, antithesis, synthesis. Uh, it's like there's a middle view that's, that's probably right in there. Um, but uh, you did kind of touch on another side of this debate, which is a whole separate question of what is the impact going to be? of AI on the economy. And I, I don't think it's really going to have the kind of nightmare scenario that everybody's talking about because AI is shitty and will never not be shitty, right? So like you'll never be able to replace an employee with AI. You can get an employee that you can increase their productivity with AI. Absolutely. But that's what we did with computers and computers didn't destroy jobs either, right? So mm -hmm. they actually created more jobs. Right? <laughs> so that, that's really all that's going to happen with AI is it'll just be a tool that will get specialized and it'll just be a productivity enhancer. So a single employee can do twice as much work. And in a sense, that can displace other employees. But history shows that usually it creates more jobs rather than destroys them. Because uh, if you're if you're more productive, then you can do more things. Mm -hmm. Like So you, usually people think, well, they'll do the same amount of things with fewer employees. And some companies do that. Most, though, if you can do twice as many things, they're going to do twice as many things. And so they'll have the same number of people. But now they can do twice as many things. And the whole history of the car car manufacturers kind of example. Like robots did not replace people in factories um, and are far along, far away from ever being able to. Uh, but what they did is they made they made productivity of cars and therefore the affordability of cars like they changed it hugely. So um, anyway, that's so, yeah, the economic side of it, I have a lot of thoughts on. And I, there are some comment threads on my blog that if you're really hunting for them, you can find me talking about it and arguing with people over it, but, um, with links of like evidence and stuff like that.